Okay, in this example, we're going to take what we've learned about 3D forces, our unit vector lambda, and direction angles and direction cosines, and we're going to do an example involving this uh, structure right here. So you can imagine that this thing right here is some sort of a tower, and there are three cables attached to the top of this tower. So I've drawn two of them here as sort of just cut out because they won't really be important, but the main cable that we're going to be looking at is this cable right here and at the end of this cable there is a little tiny support on the ground that keeps this tower alongside these other two cables from toppling over or, or moving. Now the problem statement says that there is a tension force pulling on this support on this cable with a force of 3200 newtons and the question is asking us to find the three components of that force the fx the fy and the fz components and it's also asking us to find the three direction angles theta x theta y and theta z now 3d problems can get a little confusing just because they are three-dimensional so it's very important to really understand this diagram and the dimensions and the coordinates and where the axes are in order to solve these sorts of problems. So the very first thing I like to do is to try to identify a coordinate system. Now in order to do that we need to understand this tension force, the 3200 tension force in this cable. So if we know that this cable is pulling on that little support, this support right here, we know the orientation of that tension force vector which I will call F, is directed along the line of action of that cable, and its, its origin is right here at that support. So it's pulling this support this way. And that's going to be important because if the force is acting this way, then the unit vector lambda is also acting in that direction. And remember, we can write those forces. So if I said that was force F, in terms of its uh, magnitude times the unit vector lambda. So if we zoom in here and I say that there is some sort of a force vector that's starting from that support and it's going along this line of action of the cable, I can call that F. Now there's also going to be a small unit vector that has a magnitude of one and that is lambda right there. And this is important because if we're expressing this force uh, vector in terms of lambda, we know the magnitude of F, it's just 3200 newtons, but the reason lambda is so important is because it has three different components along the X, the Y, and the Z axes, and this lambda unit vector orients this force. So that's why we can write this force in this kind of shorthand notation. Okay, so now that we know sort of this force's line of action, it's going along the cable, the next thing I want to do is draw a coordinate system, a system of some sort. So this coordinate system I can really put anywhere on the diagram. I could put that coordinate system here where you have y this way, you have x this way, and you have z this way. I could put it here at the support y, x, and z, or I could put it at some random location over here. Uh, as long as I specify that origin of the coordinate system, the math is still going to work out. But to keep things simple, I am going to specify the coordinate system to be here, right at the base of the tower. And there's no really reason uh, it needs to be there, but the reason I chose for it to be there is because this 35 meters and this 24 meters is measured from the tower's base. So if I were to draw that coordinate system here, I could say that this right here is the y-axis. And then I have the, uh, let's say, the x-axis over here, and then the z-axis uh, is directed along that line right there. So these are the positive x, y, and z coordinates. And now the next thing I can do is I can identify two points along the line of action that we're looking at, and we're going to use those two points to, to, to determine what lambda is. So if I said 
that this right here was point A, and at the top of the tower was point B, then for lambda, I could say that lambda is going to be that AB line, the vector of that AB line, divided by the magnitude of that AB line. Now there's one other thing we have to do here, and that is identify the coordinates of those two points. So for point A, which I will write right here, so point A has a coordinate x, y, z. Uh, and because we drew this coordinate system right here at the base of the tower, our 0, 0, 0 point is going to be here. So for point A, we can see that if we go along the x-axis, it has a x-coordinate of 35 meters, given by this dimension right here. So I could say that the x-coordinate is 35 meters. Now, what about the y-coordinate? Well, the y-coordinate is actually 0 because the support is on the ground and the base of the tower is on the ground. And so both of these two points are on the same plane. And so for that reason, uh, the y-coordinate is 0 meters. Now, what about the z point of this coordinate? Well, if I drew the origin of that coordinate system here, I can see that from the x-axis, it is 24 meters all along this z-axis right here. However, the z-axis is going in the positive direction this way, so if we're going this way to get to support A, this 24 meters is going to be negative. So that is going to be 24 meters. Okay, awesome. Now let's do the same thing for point B. So for point B, the x-coordinate is going to be right here, and that is simply 0 because that's where the coordinate system starts. Now for the y-coordinate, it is, actually I didn't even draw that in, but the y-distance is going to be from this origin all the way to the top of the tower where point B is located. Now, apologies, I did not draw that in, but that distance, I can draw that in really quickly, that distance here is 72 meters. So it's a pretty tall tower. So for this Y coordinate, it is going to be simply 72 meters. Okay, how about the Z coordinate? Well, the Z coordinate also starts right here at origin. And that is where this point B is located. So the Z coordinate for point B is also going to be 0 meters. Now remember, in the last few videos when we were talking about these two points, it was important to realize which one was the starting point of the line of action and which was the ending point. So because our tension force is acting in this direction, it's going up towards the tower because it's pulling on the support, this A point is our starting point and this B is our ending point. And that's important because when we try to calculate the differences between all three axes, we need to understand which one is the starting uh, coordinate and which one is the ending coordinate. Now, going back to this little equation right here where we define the unit vector lambda. I said that lambda was equal to this AB vector, which is this vector right here, over the magnitude of AB. Now, this AB vector um, we can define down here as it having some quantity in the x direction uh, plus some quantity in the y direction plus some quantity in the z direction. And this dx, dy, and dz are simply the differences in, uh, between points A and B uh, respective of the x, the y, and the z coordinates. Okay, so let's try to figure out what dx, dy, and dz are. So I'll do this here on the left. I can say that dx is going to be the x-coordinate of point B minus the x-coordinate of point A, right? This is the end, this is the start. So we always take end minus start. So that is equal to 0 meters minus 35 meters, and we get a value of negative 35 meters. And that negative sign is very important. And you can see why, because even though that this 35 is positive from 0 
all the way up to this point A, the force is going in the opposite direction. The x component of that force is actually going this way. And so it makes sense that this is going to be negative 35. Okay, awesome. So let's do the same thing for dy. Now, dy, again, is the y-coordinate of the ending point minus the y-coordinate of the starting point. So that is 72 meters minus 0 meters. And that gives us a value of, well, simply 72 meters. Now we can do the same thing for z as well, dz. And that's going to be 0 meters minus negative 24 meters. So 0 minus negative 24 meters gives us a positive 24 meters. And again, that makes sense. Even though this point A, the start of this tension force, is located in a negative uh, 24 meters on, on this positive z axis, you can see that the z component of that force is going to be positive. And so it makes sense that this value is positive. Okay, awesome. So now that we have dx, dy, and dz, the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the magnitude of that AB vector. And that is simply going to be the square of dx plus the square of dy plus the square of dz. We add those together and take the square root. So in other words, d, or AB in this case, is going to be And if we just write that out numerically, there is our negative 35, our dx, there's 72, our dy, and there's 24, our dz, we square all that. And if we calculate this out, we get d is equal to about 83.5763 meters. Okay, great. So we have the magnitude of d, which is this uh, denominator value right here. And then we also have the components of this AB vector right here. So if I were uh, to write out lambda in its kind of full form, I could do so here. I could say that lambda is equal to this quantity right here. So again, this is just the uh, dx, dy, and dz terms, which we've calculated up here. And then we had the magnitude of that AB vector, which was about 83.6 meters. And again, that is coming from just this definition of what lambda is. Okay, awesome. So now that we figured out what this lambda value is, now we could plug it into this definition right here to figure out part A, which is the three components of this force right here, or this force right here, I should say. So that is fx, fy, and fz. Well, if we already know that f is 3200 newtons, I could just plug that into this equation right here because we already know lambda, it's down here. And so what I'm doing is I'm just multiplying the magnitude of f times this unit vector lambda. So what that looks like is this right here where this term is the f uh, term and then this right here is just our lambda value that we found over here. So now this is just a matter of doing some very basic algebra, plugging this into our calculator, and what we get is that the force vector f has a x component of negative 1340 newtons in the i direction, and then it has a y component of 2757 newtons in the j direction. And then it has a smaller 919 uh, newtons in the k direction. And again, this is the f of x component, the x component of that force. This is the y component, and this is the z component. Okay, great. So that solves part one, or part A right here, which was the three components of the force. The last part was figuring out the three direction angles, theta x, theta y, and theta z. Now, how can we do that? Well, we already know what lambda is, and we've used lambda to figure out what our fx, fy, and fz components were. And if you remember from uh, previous videos, we could take fx, and we could say that fx, this component of the force is equal to the magnitude of that force times the cosine of theta x. 
And well, we already have fx, it's this value right here, and we already know the magnitude of f, that's 3200 newtons. So what I could do is I could just plug those two values into this equation uh, and then solve for theta x using our calculator. So this turns out to be negative 1340 uh, newtons is equal to 3200 newtons times cosine of theta x. Now, if I divide by 3200 on both sides, I get negative 1340 newtons over 3200 newtons. That is equal to cosine of theta x. Now I can just do the arc cosine um, on both sides, and I can say that cosine inverse of that value, negative 1340 newtons over 3200 newtons, is equal to theta x, and theta x ends up being a value of about 114.8 degrees. So there is theta x. Now, for theta y and theta z, we could do something similar. I could say that fy is equal to f times cosine of theta y, and then over here I could say that fz is equal to f times cosine of theta z. Now our uh, fy and our fz components are right here. It's this 2757 and this 19 or 919. So these two equations end up being v. And if we plug this into our calculators, we get theta y is equal to about 30.5 degrees. And then theta z is equal to about 73.3 degrees. Awesome. So there it is theta y, theta z, and theta x.